Well, thank you, everyone. Um, my name is Bea. Um, uh, welcome to Sketching Squirrels. Uh, a few things at the beginning. I just would like to say that Richmond, where I'm located at, is uh, an unceded territory of the Coast Salish people. So I am a guest and I'm very grateful. And I'm also very grateful to you for joining me and Sketch Squirrels from photos that I took. Um, I'll be recording this and I'll Try my best to upload it uh, and share with you after the meeting is over so you can rewatch it. But I plan to do these uh, every two weeks. So if you like it, please uh, let me know. And um, yeah, let's start, shall we? The first thing uh, I would like to do is to uh, show you a little bit of a warm up exercises to warm up uh, when we're sketching. Um, we, as a goal of today, is not to create um, a pretty picture is, um, oh, thank you for the feedback. Um, oh, uh, yes, if you would like to communicate with me, let me know through the chat. Uh, you will be just uh, talking to me directly. So if you're shy or something, uh, I'll, I'll, I guarantee that I'm the only one that can see. So if you want to tell me to slow down or to repeat something, let me know because I'm, I'm here to help you. Uh, so yeah, the goal of today is a gesture drawing. So we're not going to create pretty drawings. We are just going to learn about the gesture, about the posture, and about what is the attitude and energy on um, of the squirrels that we're going to sketch. And the first things that we're going to do is just warm up. And if you've noticed right away, instead of holding my pencil like this, which is how I would write my name, how I would actually uh, write and sign, I am going to hold it like this. By holding my pencil like this, I am using my shoulder, I am using my whole arm, and I am not even using just my elbow, but my whole arm. So I invite you to hold a pencil like this today. And even though you might find it a little bit uncomfortable at first, uh, let's try together to draw some circles. And you are going to see that um, it hurts at the beginning when you're using uh, the shoulder to draw, but it's a good, good idea uh, when doing um, gesture drawing to kind of uh, be very, very fluid uh, circles. We're not going to draw um, very precisely. We are going to forgive ourselves and give ourselves the opportunity to, to draw loose. And we don't have to show what we do to anybody. We don't have to send it to our boss. We just do it for ourselves, for fun. So after we have warmed up a little bit, I'm going to introduce you to uh, our friend. She is going to be our model for today uh, to explain to you very simple thing about um, uh, about the head. Uh, last week, I uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did it with a different thing. So today we're going to try this. Um, as you can see, these uh, squirrels are pretty much rats with fluffy tails. So this is a very, very uh, good model. <laughs> so the first thing I want you to know is that I draw two lines. The first line that goes from the top to the head to the nose, that is going to divide the head in two halves. The other line is around, is, yeah, it's in the eye. So it goes from one side to the other. And the reason that I want to show you this is because when the squirrel, um, if we were to, to draw an oval that is a little bit thicker at the bottom and a little bit pointy at the, at the bottom, if the squirrel is looking at us directly, you will see this imaginary line is completely straight. And you would see that the eyes, when it's straight at us, looking at us like this, is also a straight line. And this can help you position both eyes. This is, a, this is of course, not a, a very scientific model because you can see in the photo how the squirrel, the eyes are a little bit on the sides. But this can help us to locate and identify wh what's the orientation of the head. Because if the squirrel was looking to screen left, then what we have 
is, and if you know this already, please forgive me, but it, this is very, very important for people that have never done um, uh, uh, gesture drawing before. So where we have our squirrel that is looking that way, you see that this red line, we start seeing actually how it curves. And I'm gonna do that slowly again. It comes from a straight line. And suddenly, not only we see less of this eye, but we see that this, this line starts getting curved. This stays straight, but these starts, I'm gonna, uh, there's more people on the weight room, one second. I am gonna admit them, one and two, and they will join with us. So when we have the squirrel looking to screen left, we suddenly see, oh, one second, please. There we go. I hope everybody's well. Uh, we, we just started, so you haven't missed anything. When, when the squirrel is looking left, the screen left, we will see that this central line that was a straight line at the beginning, suddenly is starting to curve. And this line, because the squirrel hasn't changed, it's not looking up or down, it's still keeping the eyes at the same level. This line is still going to be straight. Uh, as you can see, it curves following, but it's because uh, uh, of, of the shape of the head. But the eye, the eye line is the same. So we have one eye and the other eye is going to be a little bit tinier. So that's, that's what would happen if the squirrel looks there. What would happen if the squirrel is looking up? Suddenly something is happening here. I don't know if you've noticed, but now the line, let me make this circle here again. The central line, the mid line is still straight, but suddenly this line that was joining the eyes when it's looking up, it's becoming curved and is curving up. So that's very important because then we know the eyes are here on the top, but we know that this squirrel is now looking up. And the same thing when the squirrel is looking down. Suddenly, this line under the eyes is curved the other way. And again, these are very, very um, general reminders that I'm going to be using. So if you see me doing these like cross lines, uh, so you know where, where this comes from. So you, um, this is very helpful. And you can also do that with the body. You can make like a zipper. And when the squirrel is going to turn, uh, this, surprisingly enough, this is such a good tool. And <laughs> This is, I think, from Ikea, and Ikea is not sponsoring this, so I, I, I promise you. But yeah, having, if you like uh, uh, drawing wild, wildlife, having, having some sort of model to rotate it and look at it, it, it's very, very useful. So after doing this, for people, oops, for people that just uh, join now, just let me know in the chat if you would like me to repeat anything. Um, let's draw some squirrels. So we're going to start with, uh, I guess, with a very, very uh, classic, classic squirrel pose. These are our photos that I took. So I, um, if not, I would have to credit the photographer. But in this case, uh, I took this. So uh, feel free to, to use it uh, as you please for um, your practice. The first thing that we're going to do is the head. And this is a very profile head. Uh, back to our squirrel model. Our squirrel is looking all the way that way. And because it's a perfect profile, we would only see the line under the eyes. But the line that would be in the middle of the head, we don't see it because it's right at the edge. So we only get to see one eye. So the first thing I would try to do is to set enough space so I have room for the tail and I have room for the body. So I'm going to start with the head and I'm going to start a little bit around here and I'm going to start with a circle. And the reason why is because um, not only we simplify shapes with circles and ovals, but it, because it makes the drawing much more organic. Uh, because of the anatomy of the squirrel, she has a muscle after doing our circle for where the skull would be. We can add a little bit of that muscle, um, but it's a good idea always to start with, um, with a circle. 
Uh, and as you notice, I'm going very loose and I'm making a thousand of lines and yeah, d uh, don't worry about that. The other thing I'm going to put is to place my eye so I know from the beginning that this squirrel is looking that way. And then one thing I learned after the head, one thing I learned from uh, my teacher in life drawing is the bean. <laughs> and the bean is just thorax and abdomen. So the whole body except the head and the neck. Uh, squirrels have really, really, uh, you cannot really see the neck that much. So when I do the bean, which is, as I said, the thorax and the abdomen, uh, abdomen. The first thing I'm going to check is that this bean shape, I'm going to imagine that she's wearing uh, um, a onesie and it has kind of a shape of it's a round thing here. And notice how I'm making a lot of circles. So this would be for the body and then the thorax. So this is kind of the bean and that's why my teacher used to call it the bean. So we have that the head is linked to the thorax and the thorax and the abdomen make kind of this like uh, interesting shape. It changes so much the bean and that's kind of uh, pretty much the basics. Uh, once we have the head and the bean, I always, especially now that we can see that she's standing in a surface, you can make a line. Uh, she has her front legs uh, both of them standing uh, on the surface and the back legs, they're standing a little bit lower. But it's a good idea to, um, to make a surface so your drawing is planted. Uh, what I would do is also notice uh, where are things located um, uh, comparing to other parts. For example, the head, if I make a line, the, the hand is not right underneath the head. It's a little bit of an angle. So that's something that we can actually uh, draw this very, very clear line that goes down from uh, where the head joins the bean. So around here, and it totally goes down. I'm not gonna worry at all about anything else. I just wanna put that line there. And then there's also interesting things like this little uh, triangle here, that's a negative space. So instead of drawing what we see, we draw what we cannot see, uh, that empty space there. That might, be, that might be actually a good idea to at least put it there. And by adding this negative space, we suddenly have drawn our arm. And that's why it's so um, helpful to see these uh, shapes that often we miss because we're looking just at the main, uh, at the actual animal, at the actual object. So we have our front legs. Um, usually it helps to draw where the shoulder, where the elbow and where the hand is. So our shoulder would be around here. The elbow can be seen here. She's kind of bending a little bit. And then we have the hand. And I'm not going to go uh, into detail, but I have one, two, three, four uh, fingers. So I'm just going to draw a little square as if she was wearing a, a mitten. So I don't have to worry about that. And then once I have shoulder, elbow, and the wrist and the hand, uh, I can actually just make a couple of lines. So I know that the squirrel is actually uh, standing on this surface. Then let's go to the back leg. Uh, there's a lot of anatomy here that we don't see because they're very furry. So we get to see the leg, um, the little feet here. I would do also just a little, a little shape, a little whatever you think this might look like. I think it's like a almost like a square feet, almost uh, always for squirrels look like a tiny, tiny squares, um, a polygon of four, four sides. It might be like this, it might be, but I noticed uh, sketching squirrels that it, it always ends having four, um, um, four parts. So I have my foot, my back foot, and I know that um, this is the leg. So it might be helpful to just suggest with a line that that's the thigh and then all this fluff 
uh, you can actually just simplify with doing a little bit of lines like this, like M, M, M's, 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 M's. But one trick is to make the M's following the fur. For example, this fur here, all this belly is super fluffy. So I would follow it like this. This fur here, I would also add a little bit of fur and a little bit of fur, but I would not go against, like for example, if I make this fur, instead of making the fur like this, I make it like this then it looks like the squirrel was electrocuted or something. All the hair is out of place. So just make sure that you look where the fur is going and you can add maybe a little bit of a couple of furs here and there so you know that it's nice and, and smooth. I also like that the tiny tufts that it has on the, on the ears. So maybe we can just add a little ear, uh, always with like ovals and maybe add a little bit of hair on the top of the on the top of the ear. I see a little bit of the back of the other hair. Uh, sorry, the other ear over there. And then uh, we had the head and the bean, and I just have to create a little bit of uh, meat inside. So uh, yeah, that would be the, the neck, but just to make sure that it doesn't look too, too robotic. If we have the head and the body and we leave that without any flesh, here or here is going to look like a, a droid rather than, than a, a, a flesh and, and skin animal. And then the last part, which is the most fun, I think, for squirrels is the tail. And a couple of weeks ago, we drew first a little S and then we made a lot of hair. Today, we can try a different thing. We can try a more Disney-esque approach. Definitely, we can start by adding that kind of S shape. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, like it's a very nice S. It comes not from here because that would be the foot, but from there right at the end of the spine. So from there, and then it curls very nicely. And then it's almost like a, uh, if you, if you play, play music, ah, what is the, what is the, uh, I forgot, I forgot how to do the, uh, yeah, the, 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 the cleft at the beginning of the, <laughs> I forgot how to draw it, but yeah, so we have at first, uh, our, our, um, kind of the essence of, of where that tail is going to be. And we can try a little Disney approach, which is just making it a little bit fluffy, a little bit more with volume and to add a little bit more of, of, um, uh, to make it sure it's like fur we can just make a little bit of M's following, following that, um, that line that we just built. Um, so we have a, a, our tail overlapping a little bit, so I can make these M's a little bit like this. So in essence, a gesture drawing, what is telling us is uh, what is the basic posture of the, in this case, squirrel. So we know we have a squirrel, we have that she's looking that way. After we have done the main, main construction, you can spend as much time as you wish. For example, uh, maybe you see that the eye, instead of being a circle, it's more like an oval with two vertices. So it's more uh, this shape than a circle. So you can add some of those details. You can add, if you want to follow the contour of this head, you can see that it has a little nose here. So those are kind of details that you can totally add uh, once you have the, 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 the main gesture. Uh, and, and I honestly, it depends really of the time how much time you have and how much if you just want to practice, practice, practice or refine a sketch. Um, but for the purpose of, of, of um, doing a couple more of squirrels, because last, last week time flew. Uh, so I got some feedback that they, people rather uh, draw more squirrels than, than less details. So I'll, I'll, I'll follow that feedback. But in the meantime, if anyone has any questions or if I can get some uh, thumbs up or hopefully thumbs up, no thumbs down. But if everything is going, is doing good, we can just move to, to another pose, another squirrel. So I am using, in case you're interested, it's just a regular, oops, regular newsprint paper. Uh, any paper would do. 
And I promise IKEA is not sponsoring this, but they sell amazing rolls of paper for children <laughs> that are so cheap. And I feel that I can draw whatever and I don't feel precious about the paper or the material. So I can just draw, draw, draw. Um, let's do another squirrel. Well, this squirrel has noticed that we are looking at her and she's looking at us like, um, excuse me, I'm having breakfast, uh, leave me alone. Uh, <laughs> but as you notice, now we have a squirrel that is totally looking at us. I would say she's slightly looking towards screen right, right here, then screen left. So maybe if I was to position our, our uh, rat, it would look a little bit like that. So we would still see both eyes. We would still see that midline starting to curve. And also we see that this line of the eyes is not like this. It's a little bit like this. So let's do this squirrel together. Uh, again, first thing, let's make sure we don't start here because we want to include the awesome tail. So I'm going to start a little bit here and I'm going to start with a circle for the main skull. And we can add those puffy cheeks uh, after, of course, I want to draw those. But for now, because she's not looking um, down, it's not going to be very triangular. It's going to be a little bit up. So that um, might not be as triangular, but still a little bit thinner at the bottom. And again, if you've been using the, the pencil like this, you might have noticed how um, it starts becoming very fluid, very loose sketching. Um, the second thing, let's do, as we said, that midline is a little bit, a little bit towards the, uh, I'm calling, I'm referring to screen right, screen left. Uh, some of you are animators, so that might come uh, familiar. I just mean um, right and left. Uh, so it's a little bit there. And if you go over, that's fine. And then the other line, for the eyes. And I have one eye and I can see it very nicely. And the other eye, it's a little bit starting to get a little bit thinner uh, there. I have a little nose there, so I don't want to miss the opportunity to add a little nose, but that's pretty much the head. Uh, only because it's a front view and we have these really nice ears, I might actually add those now. One, I can see more of the inside and the other one I see more of uh, the outside. So I can uh, suggest that by adding uh, some lines. But in essence, uh, all we want to do is just to make sure that we have the head, she's looking that way, and, um, and then we can move, once we've done the head, we can move to the bin, the body, the thorax, and uh, the abdomen. In this case, this squirrel, if you notice, the body is the same, but because of perspective, now suddenly looks like, where's the body? Well, it's behind. And what we're gonna do is pretend that we have like X-ray vision, and we're just gonna imagine that the body is, we're gonna draw what we see. We see there's a lot of meat here and a lot of meat there. So I'm just gonna draw what I see. I have no idea where the body is, but all I can see is that behind the head, there's a bunch of meat. And there's even more here than here. So I'm going to make this a little bit larger. And it seems interesting because if I was doing this from the imagination, I might have thought that, oh, the body's here. But that's not what I'm seeing. The body's all behind the head. And another thing that might be useful to start noticing is that look at that straight uh, line, boom, compared to this curvy line. So that's just how um, this squirrel is, is posing. If you notice, this leg is a little bit closer. So she might as well be like, funk, with this leg uh, forward, whereas this back leg might be a little bit in the back. So that's why it makes a, a curve. But even if we don't know anything about uh, squirrel anatomy, which I actually don't, <laughs> uh, I'm just going to draw what I see. Um, 
because of the posture of the squirrel that is looking forward, I'm, it might be actually useful to draw that floor. I know that the two hands and this leg are kind of in the same plane. So I might start looking, where is that hand? It might be a little bit left of the head. So around here, that's where one hand is. Um, and maybe I did it a little bit too high. That's something that I noticed some people in life drawing, they start measuring with their pencil. So maybe I was a little bit too close. So either with my eraser or even without erasing, um, it doesn't really matter. Uh, after all, it's just for practice. So that's my hand over there. Then I have the other hand is right under the nose. So I might do the other hand over there. And then I have another leg, um, the foot a little bit higher, but definitely outside the, uh, if I made a line, an imaginary line is outside the head. So it's gonna be maybe around here. So now this doesn't look like anything, but as soon as we start linking things, you can see this arm here and here. So it's gonna be our shoulder, it's gonna be there, our elbow there and our wrist. And it kind of, it kind of makes sense because she's like standing with her, uh, with her legs forward. So we have a shoulder, we're gonna have our elbow and our wrist. And I, I don't know if you can see that well, I'm gonna zoom in, but it's like a very nice curve. Um, so it's like if she was wearing a puffy jacket. So that's, uh, I can do that with the pencil. And then another line here, very nice, joining with the, with the wrist. Uh, there's so much fluff, a lot of fluff. I'm not gonna worry about that now, but I can see also a very nice negative space here. And if I just draw the negative space, suddenly I just drew half of the arm. So I'm gonna continue with this line because that's gonna be my shoulder, my elbow, my wrist. And suddenly I have my front arms. I'm gonna try to draw, see a little bit of foot there. So I might add a little bit of foot and this very nice curve here. And then I see on the other side, what looks to me like the, um, kind of like the, maybe the top of the, hmm, I would say this might be the, the, the hip. I would imagine it's just, just a sudden change in angle. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna draw it. So that angle there, then it falls flat and then it curves in a little bit. So maybe I'll do it a little bit wider. And then just a little bit of a negative space there. So now I have, it kind of looks like a, like a tardigrade or something because I haven't added any texture of hair. So if we do that together, we can see that there's a lot of hair that is going from the top down, top down. So if I add a little bit of fluff, then suddenly, it doesn't look like a hairless, scary, terrifying squirrel, but actually a fluffy, cute, and maybe slightly still terrifying, but at least she has hair. <laughs> and there's an even, I can see a little bit of her mouth underneath. So maybe I can just add a little bit of the mouth there. And in essence, uh, all I would need to do now is to start adding uh, that awesome, awesome tail right there. One thing I'm noticing as I am drawing is that the head is a little bit flatter at the top. So I'm just gonna flatten the top a little bit and refine a little bit the, the ears with a little bit of fluff, 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 fluff. And that's something that you do constantly. You, you, you notice, you readjust, and that's why it's a very loose, loose style of, of drawing. As I said, you can uh, notice that the, uh, the eyes have a little bit of like um, a shape that almost looks like if you make a line, they're looking at the nose. Um, 
if I see it from the profile, uh, it would look like this. If as soon as you're rotating the head, it's starting to modify in perspective. And now uh, it's almost, it's almost that shape. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the other eye. There's some people that really, really uh, like to add the highlight because it adds suddenly, it, it comes to life all of the sudden. So you, you, you can experiment. I'm gonna uh, darken a little bit the nose. And I just want to add the fluff uh, because we're looking at the at the squirrel from the front view. I don't get to see that incredible S that we saw from profile, but I still see a little bit. If you notice, I see a curve here and then it curves back. If I had X-ray vision, the tail would insert around here. So I am going to see how tall this is approximately here. And I'm just going to curve curve that S and then it goes behind. And to make things in front, you just make a little line and that tells uh, the viewer that this shape here is on top of this shape, just by making a little line um, uh, that's called overlapping. And that I can show you that with the, our rat. So for example, if I have, um, this butt of the rat is overlapping the this part here, the, the this arm. So you see that there is a line here. Well, that line is indicating as here that this, uh, in this case, this part of the rat is overlapping. Um, these are things that that uh, I know might be a little bit overwhelming, but with practice, we 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 get all uh, we all get better with practice. Um, now this is almost like a caterpillar. So if we give it a little bit of hair, I'm just going to do some M, M's, 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 and M's, 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 M's. So I give it a little bit of fluff and, and now, now it, it's, it's a little bit of a, of a squirrel. Um, let's do another squirrel unless anyone has any questions. We have plenty of time to do a couple more. Um, I would like to do a squirrel that has eaten a lot of peanuts and is standing on the branch, uh, <laughs> based on a true story. And now it's a little bit different. Uh, we still get to see, uh, if I was to pose the squirrel, um, we still get to see a little bit of that midline, but in this case, she's looking a little bit like that. So she's looking the screen, right? So I would start, if you wanna use a new piece of paper, uh, absolutely, I'm trying to economize a little bit. So I would start with, let's see, I don't wanna run out of space. I would start with the head and I would see that she has a, the midline. We still see a little bit of the, of the nose. We definitely see that eye. I'm going to start making it a little bit like that. And I don't see the other eye, but I know it's right there. Um, we get to see a little bit of the snout and the mouth. I'm not worried about, uh, I'm not going to worry about that now, but I definitely want to at least position the ears. One is a little bit like this. And if we are a little bit uh, observant, we notice that there's a line here and then it curves and then it has like boom, boom, two lines. So I'm going to do that. One line up, a curve, and then boom, boom, another line. And then a little bit of a triangle uh, that is going to be the, the ear on the back. And that's something that when doing gesture, um, drawing things that are on top of other things and things that are behind are important. Uh, so if something is behind, make sure that that information is very clear. So once I have the head position, I know it's kind of looking a little bit like that. Let's see the bean. She's reclining. She's reclining and most of the body is here and then we see the thorax. So it's kind of it's kind of a bean as of 
yeah, instead of being reclining like this, it's a little bit of an, an angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a lot of circles and trying to see how, how much inclination. Uh, I think it's a little bit like this. And I'm gonna add my bean is the, the body and the thorax. So I think I'm going to be happy with, with kind of like a, it looks a little bit of a rectangle or something. I can see later once I got the proportions, right, that there's a very nice curve here. Also, another thing that people do is to measure how long is the body compared with the head. So for example, if I had this, uh, the head, if I measure it with my pencil, I can see how many heads. So one two and three approximately. So I would put one, two and three. Ah, I was a little bit off, but yeah, I, I, it's a loose, loose style of drawing. So don't worry if things are a little bit uh, not quite as proportionate. But one thing I like is get to see the belly uh, and then we get to see a leg there. Um, so it's a, it's a very, it's a very artsy fartsy uh, pose, very Renaissance squirrel. We get to see a little bit of this arm. She has her her uh, her wrist inwards, so we don't get to see the other um, the other hand, but we see one hand here, and we have a very nice negative space here. So I'm gonna make uh, use of that. I'm gonna uh, make use of that negative space that I had here, because that is also gonna tell me where this branch is. I had to see that I have the little fingers right there. She's grabbing that uh, branch and then uh, the branch disappears a little bit under the body and then the branch continues. So, so far I have that, that arm. I like very much how I can see uh, the shoulder, the elbow and the wrist. And it's kind of a very nice line. It's like almost, I don't know, it looks to me, I don't know if this, Makes sense, but do you see this um, shape? I don't know what shape is this, but I see kind of, it's like the ear of an elephant almost, like very wide at the top and very pointy at the bottom. So this is the shape that I'm gonna put uh, here. It's like almost as if she, um, you know, she she's uh, bending her wrist. So I'm just going to put that shape there. And then I have a little feet there that is standing on a branch. And I am just going to make a little square. I'm not going to worry about feet or anything. And I see another branch coming out. So I might actually do that, that branch coming out of there. And then the nice leg on top of the feet. So this is not an easy pose, but I thought it would be interesting because I don't get to see squirrels usually uh, resting. Uh, so that, that that's kind of uh, neat. Um, so then uh, if I uh, have positioned this leg and complete this uh, branch, as you see, this branch gets under the belly. So that's gonna be all all fluff, fluff, fluff. I get to see the belly, almost as like as if she was too heavy. She has to have her weight on this other branch here. And this is the other branch that came that way. So I see the little feet standing there and almost, I'm gonna look at this negative space here. Almost it feels as if, uh, to me at least, like she just, yeah, she's gonna stay. She's very stable. She's not kind of struggling. She found her pose. So I know this all seems a little bit disjointed, but once I start, uh, all the beats and pieces are here. All I need to do now is add a little bit of fluff on the areas that, uh, that I just drew, making sure that they follow the right, um, that I'm not doing electrified squirrel uh, with my feet over here. 
And again, this is not the easiest pose, so don't worry too much if, if it, it was too too a little bit too much, but I thought I thought it would be nice to draw something different. The other uh, thing that I like is how the tail is kind of just like uh, in a very nice A shape. So I'm just gonna make an S shape. And I'm gonna give myself some artistic license because I don't see the end, but I'm gonna curve it inwards because I think it's cute. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of volume to the tail. And as a last, last thing, just add all those M's to add a little bit of, of volume. You can go either uh, with a pencil holding it like this, you can even add a little bit of shade and that's the good thing about holding the pencil like this is that you don't create lines that would be very difficult uh, if you have to color every single thing. You can hold it like this and you just can add a nice tone in your squirrel, especially because the belly is so white compared to the rest. It's a gray squirrel that I would like to leave the belly with, um, with that pa uh, paper tone. Uh, color. Uh, because we see the nose a little bit, I'm going to zoom in. It's a very cute squirrel. <laughs> I'm going to just spend a few seconds uh, putting a little bit of dark on the eye and I see the little nostril there. So I'm just going to spend just a few seconds. Uh, I have the little mouth, just just, just a little bit of, of uh, a, a gift, a, a gift that she's posing for us. So why not? Yay! That's our squirrel. So yeah, this is a different, a different uh, pose, a little bit more, more dynamic. Um, if we're good to go, uh, we have so many more. So there, I had another one of, of squirrel defying gravity, but I think, I think, um, let's see. There was one here that I had. If you. Give me three seconds that I think it would be interesting because it's like, uh, let's see, where is action squirrel? Yeah, there's some, yeah, that one is good. So this action squirrel, I'm going to change paper. We get to see a little bit of everything. I think, yeah, well, you, you, you tell me if you want action squirrel one or action squirrel two, I will open it for votes. <laughs> so action squirrel one. It's a squirrel that is looking, we see both eyes and one paw on the floor and action squirrel two is the one that is almost like in a superhero pose. Action, okay, uh, the, the, the decision has been made unanimous. Action squirrel two, thank you everyone. <laughs> so in our action squirrel two, the first thing I'm gonna try to do is fit it in the paper. Uh, it's very embarrassing when I'm giving a tutorial and I don't have room for all the <laughs> parts of the squirrel. So the first thing that we're going to do is see how is the squirrel looking at. She's looking at screen uh, left and we get to see uh, that midline a little bit curvy and also we would get to see the line un underneath the, the eye. So let's do that. I start with a circle for the actual skull. And then, as I said before, the shape of the head of the squirrel and the rat uh, are kind of oval. So don't forget to add a little bit of that soft, soft tissue of the muscle. Um, always having in mind that uh, the more the more she's looking forward, the less of that um, pointy uh, uh, muscle you would see. Um, also, I guess it changes uh, from squirrel to squirrel. This is just a, a gray, gray squirrel. Uh, so we're going to have our midline. And I don't see the other eye, but I know it's there. Unless she had an incredible adventure, it's just one eyed squirrel, but still it would be there. <laughs> and then uh, the other line underneath. Uh, both eyes. So we have our kind of a crosshairs uh, for reference. Then I'm going to place the ear, which is a little bit towards screen left out of the eye. And I'm just going to start with a, with a circle, with an oval. Um, the other uh, ear, it's a little bit more in line with the, ear, with the nose because of perspective. It's just a little bit triangular. Uh, without making it too, too cat-ish, 
but yeah, it's a little bit more triangular. And the top of the head is a little bit flatter, so I will adjust that. Uh, but pretty much, uh, that's that's pretty much our, our our head, the head of the squirrel. I might add just as a landmark, the little nose, just for myself. But that's pretty much it. Uh, the body is much more visible now. We have the thorax right here, and then we have all the rest, the body. And I like I like very much to compare. If you see the top of the body, it's a little bit underneath the top of the head, but not too much. And then there's a very very clear line here, chum, and then another one, chum. So it's like a very hmm, like chisel, chisel. Uh, even though in nature things should be a little bit more curvy and stuff, but this might be a good and interesting thing is to draw. So let's locate uh, how high the body is going to be, and I'm just going to make a bean with these things that we talked about. So we had kind of like a, a, a line there that might come around here, this other line here. So it's like a very so far it looks like uh, uh it has an armor but yeah let's make sure that our bean covers both body and thorax and i'm just uh drawing what i see um one thing that i notice as well is that one arm is kind of recoiled so i know the little arm one hand is going to be there and the other is going to be Let's see, if I make the surface, it's going to be, um, if I make a line with my pencil, it's almost under the eye. So, and it's also extended, so it's going to be more like a, like a triangle, it's like superhero pose. Um, so I have both arms with the, you see the elbow there, the shoulder here. So the elbows is usually what, what we see the most, because it's where it changes um, direction. So that's going to be the, the elbow there. And this is much more straight. It's like a straight line. And then this other uh, arm, I can see the elbow there. Again, elbows, uh, wrist is where things change direction. Uh, so it's, it's a good idea to, to, to look at, at those things. Even though I know nothing about uh, anatomy, I know there's going to be some sort of joint for her to, to bend her arm. Um, so we have a front, uh, a front, uh, arms, uh, let's go with the legs. We have a little bit of a feet there and we have a very nice negative space there. So we have our feet and I'm just going to imagine that he's wearing a sock so I don't have to draw every single, uh, toe. And then I have this very nice line coming from the arm to the floor. And then I have a very nice negative space there under the body. And by drawing that negative space, I just draw uh, where the where the feet is going to be. It's kind of uh, kind of a trick. Um, and then I'm just going to uh, this is leg, and this is the body. So I just make sure that. I refine those lines a little bit. I see the, the, the belly there. And it makes sense because um, the, the, the way the squirrel is, um, the thorax would be on top of the abdomen and the abdomen would be on top of the leg. Uh, so just by doing those little lines of overlapping, uh, we get to see the squirrel kind of, um, yeah, we get to see all these all these bits and pieces. But again, it looks a little bit, but it lacks a little bit of that organic thing. So I'm gonna just like with the adding fluff and also adding a little bit of like curvy, curvy lines. Otherwise it's gonna it's gonna uh, be very robotic, um, like almost like man-made. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that that fluff here and there, especially on the shoulder. And look at all the fluff here. Um, I don't know if it's because the fur is wet or what, but it's definitely, it breaks down there. So now at least I have a little bit more of ratty, ratty feeling. If we do the same thing that we did before, like darkening a little bit, some areas, I can see that that's a little bit darker. That's a little bit darker. So at least we know what's on front and what's in the back. 
And now I'm just going to add a little bit of the tail. I see that it ends there. And I see that almost, if I imagine that this is just a big shape, I don't see much of the S, but I see that if I was to look at this without my glasses, I would see just a big blob uh, on top. And it almost follows the, the same shape, only it has a little of a puff there. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of fluff, uh, fluff, 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 just drawing M's, M's, M's. And here a little bit shorter. So I just want to make sure that I don't make them as, as crazy as this one and even has some here. And then, yeah, I want to add a little bit of darkness uh, because it's really in the, in the back. And things uh, that are going to attract the eye are going to be things that are have more light in general. Probably if, uh, if there is anyone working in backgrounds, don't quote me on that, please, because I know there's a lot of tricks for design of making things dark and, and light. I don't know anything about that. So, <laughs> but I, I just want to say that by pushing this um, a little bit darker, I'm just uh, pushing it into the back. Uh, and because I have a little bit of time, I'm just going to add a little bit of the eye. And we have a, a request, of course, that if we can draw a little bit of the detail of the face, of course we can. So what I'm doing pretty much, uh, so the eye is a circle, it's a sphere. Uh, and we get what we get to see is the eye, the sphere covered by skin. And the skin is what's gonna make this eyelid that we are seeing. So the sphere of the eye, if we, if you've watched Terminator and you remember that scene where he plucks the eye out, it's just the sphere. <laughs> kind of think of any other example. So if I could see uh, underneath, the eye is just uh, a sphere. And what we get to see when this animal is alive is, is the, the eyelids. Uh, closing around. So that's why we have that very nice, um, that very nice shape. Uh, in this case, this squirrel has also a very nice uh, kind of like a rim of, of a wider hair around and the rest is a grayer, which also adds to the to the cuteness. And because we had a request a little bit to, to work on the on the on the face, let's uh, darken a little bit our lines here so I can draw a little bit of detail of, um, I'm just going to do the outline of, um, of, the, of the squirrel. So I get the little nose, I have that mid, midline, uh, and I see a little bit of uh, the mouth, and I see a lot of hairs, uh, whiskers, and I would invite you to, to give yourself a little bit of freedom and just do very quick lines. It doesn't matter how long you make them, as long as you give yourself that kind of creative freedom to, to add some, um, some whiskers to your squirrel. Uh, if you left a little bit of white on the eye, then uh, you have a very nice highlight. I didn't. So I'm just going to darken it a little bit to see if, if, I, if something can be done. But then let's add a little bit of dark inside the, the uh, ear. And uh, really refine that that shape a little bit. Uh, if I look at the at the uh, ear, I see there's some tufts of hair at the top, and I see the inside that is very dark. And then how this uh, ear is on top of the head, and this head is on top of that ear that is also a little bit darker. So we just added a little bit just with, um, that's why I like this pencil, because uh, we can go very light or we can suddenly go and add a lot of uh, accents, uh, which is how, uh, how we kind of build that, that, that uh, gesture drawing. And uh, we're going to do our final one is now uh, 6.56. And we have uh, our squirrel. She is extremely cute and she's gonna be eating some nuts. 
So I'm just going to turn these. I like to uh, use all the space in the paper. <laughs> I guess uh, if there are any animators in the room, we like to use all the spaces in the paper. Uh, newsprint is expensive. Uh, this is newsprint. Um, there was a couple of years ago, uh, there was no newsprint, so we had to draw anywhere. Um, let's do this squirrel. She's actually standing. Uh, I think I have enough room here. Yeah, if I, if I plant this. Uh, she's standing, she's eating. Um, I'm going to start, let's see, around here with my circle for the, for the skull. Oh, thank you. If anyone has to uh, leave early, no, don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to start with the, with the skull. And because the squirrel is looking a little bit towards uh, the screen um, left, but down, it's a little bit different. If you notice, we get to see the midline, but also we get to see uh, the line under the eyes a little bit curved backwards, almost like in a smile. So let's see what that looks like. So we have our muscle that we added to the skull, and then we have our midline that is a little bit curvy. And then we, because the squirrel is looking down, we see that this midline is down. Um, maybe next time I should zoom in a little bit on the paper, but I hope you can see it. I have one eye here, and then I have one eye almost hidden under the under the head. Don't worry, it looks like a like a bug now, but it's gonna look okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of the muscle, uh, those muscle lines here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of the ear, one ear there, and one ear here. Uh, for the sake of uh, clarity and, and speed, I'm just gonna start uh, with the bean, uh, noticing how we have a line here from the head. Here, another line that is very interesting is curvy, and then another one here. So I have like a bean that has three lines that are curvy on this side and a much more rounder uh, line on the other. So when I do my bean, I am also looking at these things. So we had like one curve, two, and three. I'm also going to draw the surface. It's a very, it's like a blob uh, bean, but, but it's getting there. Uh, I'm going to draw, if you see, there's a feet here that is very long because it's on profile and almost goes beyond uh, the head. So I'm just going to draw my feet there. And then this one here that is exactly the same uh, because it's on perspective. It might look a little bit uh, shorter. Uh, then we're going to have our little arms that are around the, nuzzle, the muscle. One arm here and one, sorry, hand there. So it's just like, like, do, 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 do. And then we have a very clear place where the elbow and the shoulder are. It's like very nice, also very, very curvy. So we have our shoulder, our elbow right here and the wrist. So I'm just going to link those to create those very nice curves. Uh, I don't see much of the other arm. Maybe that is the arm. I'm going to take artistic license there. And then I'm just going to do uh, the belly. If you notice, the belly is on top of the leg. So the belly is right here. And I'm going to add a little bit of fluff. And that's the leg right underneath. Maybe I put the, the foot a little bit too long. Maybe it's a little bit too long. So I'll do some surgery here. And then I'm just going to add that fluff that divides the, the leg from the belly. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that fluff, fluff, fluff and more fluff here in the arm. So our, our, our squirrel, it looks, it looks a little bit weird now that I look at it. Uh, maybe I have to do a little bit of surgery here because I think I didn't get that quite right. So I know for sure that there is a line there, a line there, and this is more, much more straight. There we go. So we, we, we make corrections as, as we go and adjustments and, and that's absolutely fine. And then I'm just going to do the tail. I see a little bit of that S curve. 
So I'm gonna imagine that I'm not wearing glasses and I would see these coming from there. And I know that this piece is on top, all these. So I make sure that I am overlapping that. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of fluff. I don't know if you've ever seen, um, if you see a squirrel up front, look at the tail. It's incredible because um, it's literally, it's like a rat. It's a very, very thin uh, tail. And all what we see, all what we see is the volume of the hair. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a rat, but super cute. I mean, rats are cute too. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, detail on the on the eyes uh, since someone asked er earlier and thank you so much for for asking asking questions uh, and I'm going to add the other ear a little bit I see a little bit of the inside I'm going to leave a little bit of a highlight and maybe I drew this eye a little bit too bulgy but that's okay I, I forgive myself and I'm okay with that we we have to you know, uh, take take risks and embrace what comes from it. After all, this is life drawing. We're, we're no no baby's gonna die. So let's let's take a little bit of a risk and 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 take chances and take risks. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, darkness here because this leg is on the back. A little bit of darkness here, where the tail meets the 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 bean, the torso, and a little bit here underneath the arm, and then a little bit of whiskers. Why not? So as you see, in, in very, very short uh, time, we can make a very uh, efficient uh, drawing that, yeah, it might not be a, a high quality line drawing, but it, we're telling uh, a story of gesture. We know that the squirrel is standing on her back uh, legs, eating uh, nuts and where she's looking at. And, if you work in animation, we can uh, make, uh, if you're drawing storyboards or even for yourself, you're telling a story uh, very simply and you can fill your sketchbooks with, with this kind of uh, drawing. So I am very grateful that you were here today. 